Maybe it's just me and my perception growing up where I did, but 90s movie kids were badass. First of all, the amount of kid movies that came out during the 90s is utterly ridiculous. If you haven't seen my video where I share my love of nostalgia and all things 90s, be sure to check that out. It talks about why the 90s was the best decade to be a kid. One of the many reasons the 90s was so awesome was the sheer amount of kids movies out at the time. The animated films from Disney alone are staggering from Lion King to Mulan and Toy Story. But Walt Disney Pictures produced several other live action movies for kids that showcase their badassery in the 90s. I'm not sure that's a word, bro. I mean, I'm no wordsmith or, you know, good with words, but. Enter Disney's blank check. 12 year old Preston Waters gets mixed up with an escaped convict named Quigley after Preston is nearly run over and his bike is demolished by Quigley in a parking lot. Having drawn a considerable amount of attention in the parking lot, and why the hell not? You almost ran over a small child, as opposed to a fat child like Jeremy. You couldn't have ran over Jeremy's ass. He was too fat. You couldn't have missed him. In order not to draw any more attention, Quigley hastily signs a blank check and hands it to Preston to replace his bike. A blank check for you kids out there without a banking account is a signed check with no designated dollar amount meaning you can virtually write in whatever amount you want. Little did he know, this kid was a genius and he had some cojones, you know? You know what I'm saying? Like huevos rancheros. Like all TV and movie kids in the 90s, Preston was very smart and cunning. Because he was written that way as a character, mind you. I mean, seriously, bro, I wasn't even allowed to cross the street without a bungee tethered to my waist. And these kids are like biking and rollerblading to school without helmets on? Do realize I would've gotten hit over the head with the baseball bat if my moms found out that I rode a bike without a helmet, kid? I'd be wearing a helmet permanently for the rest of my life if my mom ever found out I rode a bike without a helmet, bro. That's cause I'm sure it's crap not paying for your medical bills if you hurt your dumb head. You thought LMNOP was its own letter until you were 11 years old. Yeah, I really started getting smarter around 12. Preston being the bold kid that he was, I don't know, you're bold. Decided to give himself a modest million dollars. And to make it look official, he scanned it into his computer, used a nice clean font and printed that bad boy out. This was 1994, okay? I don't remember if we even had a computer in 94. And the first computer I do remember definitely didn't have internet. But we had Encarta. <laughs> Yo, bro, Encarta? You were really showing your age, kid. These kids don't know the struggle of Encarta, okay? Because if it wasn't Encarta, then it was those out-of-date world books from the 70s, you know? Now, a normal kid might stop there, but these are 90s movie kids we're talking about. So, of course, he decided to cash the check, which, through a crazy coincidence, he was able to walk out of the bank with a million dollars in cash. And again, because he's hardcore hootie over here, he doesn't just stop at buying a new bike and a couple video games. Nope. He creates a fake millionaire known as Macintosh and proceeds to buy a mansion, go-kart track, and a water slide that connects from his office, which is basically a room full of huge arcade machines, TVs and video games, to a pool below. And he was also the pioneer of Rocket League. And he max on that hot FBI chick, bro. If you wanna take Yep, that's the one, right there. He basically lived out what every kid's dream would be of winning a million dollars, unlike Richie Rich, who was a millionaire from birth. Yikes. Yes, another 90s movie kid, perhaps the 90s movie kid, Macaulay Culkin was the definition of badassery for every kid in the 90s. Macaulay proved that despite having the worst parents possible, he could not only defend his house against two robbers known as the Wet Bandits, but he could also survive in the big city against Tim Curry and the Wet Bandits again. And he used strong language. I don't need a 
big horse's ass. Down here, you big horse's ass. I'd have had to eat a ball of soap if I had said ass as a kid. I found palm olive had a nice piquant after dinner flavor. Heady, but with just a touch of mellow smoothness. And when 90s movie kids weren't pulling one over on adults or concocting elaborate schemes to meddle in the love life of adults like the Olsen twins or the fake Lindsay Lohan twins, they were essentially professional sports stars. For some reason, professional baseball teams really needed the help of 12 year olds in the 90s. The Cubbies needed the help of medical marvel Henry Rowan Gardner or whatever the hell his manager decided to call him that day. I'm looking for Henry Ruhlenfurter. Raffenboozer. Rosenbagger. Garden hoser. Ruhlengroder. Hey, way to go, run a mucker. Rowan Gardner, you're going in. What'd he call me? <laughs> Billy Haywood ends up being the manager of the Twins in Little Big League, and the California Angels enlisted the help of Heavenly Angels through mediums and foster kids Roger and JP. Basically, if you weren't interfering with parental matters or playing some sort of sport, then your only option left would be to make an emotional bond with an animal like one of the kids in these movies. Why just settle for one when you can play sports and make a special bond with an animal? No way. This summer, the dog is in the house. It's no wonder millennials or 90s kids grew up thinking we could do or be anything we wanted. Look at what inspired us during our youth. Which brings me to my favorite portion of the video, Irma's Crapometer. How much of a crap should you really give about today's episode? Today's video bombs the bowl at three out of five bloop bloops. There is a lack of quality movies for kids today. Perhaps Hollywood doesn't want to give false hopes and create a new generation of losers. On the other hand, Teen Mom and crap like that isn't really that much better. But who the hell cares as long as it doesn't interrupt Dr. Phil? Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That does it for today's episode, dudes. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to show your support and hit that like button. I'm finally getting settled in my new apartment, so I should be back to my schedule of videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. If you guys want to follow my adventures as I explore Portland, Oregon, then be sure to follow me on Instagram. Until next time, peace out, what it do.